guys. So uh, today we're going to deal with the end of the uh, Gilded Age. We're going to sort of wrap it up, but we're going to talk about the social aspects of the Gilded Age. And we need to start with families because families in the late 1800s, post-Civil War, had grown uh, kind of isolated and smaller uh, because of the pressures of feeding so many people and so many mouths. And we were now living in the city more than we were living in the suburbs and the rural areas. So families weren't able to sort of supply for themselves. They had to buy their goods, their groceries, and so forth. So this meant that families were more isolated in terms of they didn't have those extended families of aunts and uncles and grandparents and so forth, all living in one common place on the farm. They had um, only the direct family, the immediate family, living together in really small sort of tenement housing in the city. So it was mom, dad, kids, that's it, nobody else. And they had also grown smaller families weren't having the numbers of kids that they used to have because there were more mouths to feed and they couldn't afford to do that. Sustenance was a, was a real problem. So, um, now women also made a move here in the late 1800s to gain more independence. So with the passage of the Civil Rights Amendments, Amendments 13, 14, and 15, and that 15th Amendment giving African American men the right to vote, really angered women because they felt like, hey, we've been left out. We wanted the right to vote too, and you've left us out of the whole equation. So women like Charlotte Perkins Gilman wrote a book about economics and women and how important it was for women to really become independent and survive on their own, to not worry, not have the worries of having a man to support you. So she encouraged women to go to school, get degrees, get good jobs, so that they could become more and more independent. Um, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony, they were a force to be reckoned with. The two of them, when they got together, Susan B. Anthony was the, um, the go-getter of the two of them, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton sort of um, played a background role, uh, but the two of them together were, uh, were something else. They were really the dynamic duo. Uh, Susan B. Anthony would be arrested at one point for actually casting a vote in, a, in an election where she was not allowed to vote. Um, they're going to form the National American Women's Suffrage Association, and they're really going to push hard for the passage of that amendment to the Constitution that's going to give them the right to vote. Um, the problem for both of them, they die before it happens. Uh, the 19th Amendment is passed before they are able to uh, see it through to fruition. Uh, they passed away, but they really led the charge. Um, Carrie Chapman Catt, she doesn't argue on the right to vote for women as a right. She says it's a necessity because women are the ones in the household making decisions about the economic decisions about where they're going to shop, what they're going to buy, and that sort of thing. And they're also making the health care and educational decisions for their families. So doesn't it make sense that the people making these decisions should have a say in who actually writes the policies that affect them? Seems to be common sense. Now, Wyoming is the first state in the country to give women the unlimited right to vote. And that happens in 1869, so pretty early, considering it's not going to be, an it's going to be another... 50 years before uh, the nation sees it their way uh, and actually passes the amendment for women to have the right to vote. Now, alcohol is a big concern after the Civil War because it, it was really blamed for tearing families apart. Men would get their paychecks, go to the bars, drink their minds out, and come home and abuse their families. This is not a good situation. Uh, so uh, the whole family structure in the United States post-Civil War became threatened because of, of alcohol um, in a lot of places. Um, now, the Women Christians Temperance Union, the WCTU, is going to be formed by two women named Frances Willard and Carrie Nation. Um, these two women don't take a passive role about banning alcohol. They're really militant about it, and they bring out the militant side in a lot of women to ban alcohol. Now, Carrie Nation is actually known for taking an axe into a bar and sort of starting to hack it apart um, because she's so angry about alcohol and its effect on the families. 
The Anti-Saloon League is going to be formed in 1893, and that's going to be another attempt to um, ban or limit alcohol in the United States. Uh, we've already talked about the Maine Law in 1851, which banned alcohol in Maine. So the precedent had sort of been set in Maine, but it hadn't taken over the whole nation. Now, in 1919, you're going to see the passage of the 18th Amendment, and that amendment bans the production, sale, and distribution of alcohol in the United States. You will talk about what that leads to, but about 10 years later, that amendment is overturned by the 21st Amendment, which says, hoo hoo ho, maybe we made a mistake here. Um, and that's the only amendment in US history to be overturned. Entertainment. So entertainment was huge post-Civil War. Um, we, uh, we saw the emergence of vaudeville, which was sort of the Broadway um, of the time, where people went to shows where they sang and they danced and they did follies and that sort of thing. And vaudeville was a big, big hit because people could go for relatively inexpensive entertainment. Um, we also saw the emergence of a big circus at the time. You might recognize these names, Barnum and Bailey. Uh, Phineas T. Barnum and James Bailey are going to start the circus in America. And um, they, uh, Phineas Barnum, of course, is known for his line, there's a sucker born every minute. Um, and uh, maybe that's just what the circus is or was. I'm not sure. Um, the uh, Wild West shows that emerged, um, William F. Buffalo Bill Cody, uh, is going to be responsible for those uh, Wild West shows. He's the guy who was out on the plains and slaughtered millions, well, not millions, but he slaughtered thousands of buffalo himself. Um, uh, pretty brutal. Uh, and, uh, but he develops this Wild West show, which actually went on tour not only in the United States, but in Europe as well. Um, and his, um, it had trick riders and, and um, all kinds of roping activities and... Um, gun tricks and all that good stuff. And probably his most famous star was a girl named Annie Oakley because she was a trick shooter. She could, uh, she could hit anything from anywhere, it seemed. Um, but she was really good with a, really good with a gun. Um, and then we saw some other pastimes as well. Bicycle riding, croquet, baseball, which of course is credited to Doubleday for inventing, but we know that's not true. Um, he's actually buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, and basketball, James Naismith, of course, um, with the peach baskets on the pole, throwing the ball in, sort of evolved into what we know as modern-day basketball. And we all know that Carolina's my team, right? So uh, there'll be no debate there. Um, now, the summation here of the Gilded Age. So politically, we know the Gilded Age was a time of, of, of tumult. Um, it was really... Um, an anxious time because you didn't know which party was going to control Congress every two years. Uh, the Republicans seemed to dominate the White House, but they couldn't really dominate Congress without uh, um, the Democrats getting involved. Um, so they couldn't just make wholesale decisions. Um, and politically, the reason that this happens is because people are really very similar in the country. They really tended to ride the middle line, um, and they weren't. We didn't have extreme uh, political views. Uh, economically, we know this is a, another tumultuous area because of the depressions that happened during the late 1800s and that really strike our economy in the heart and uh, destroy banks and businesses and people are unemployed and it's really a hard time um, for many years during the Gilded Age. And then socially, this was sort of the escape for people. They were able to escape their lives, to do something different, to live in a different world, to go to shows, to see different acts from around the world, to... Um, enjoy sporting events. Um, so socially, um, we really start to emerge as a country as far as providing entertainment for people. And that largely has to do with the fact that people are living in cities and they're clustered more and they have access to those. So the history of the Gilded Age is a very interesting one. It's, um, it's very tumultuous. It tumbles back and forth. But, um, but it's a fun time period to study. <laughs>